You've probably seen Clear's machines at the airport. They're the ones rich people use to skip you in line. And if you're like me, you hate Clear. But Clear has ambitions far beyond the airport. The company wants to completely own your digital identity, verified with an iris, fingerprint, or face scan. Rest easy, knowing your privacy is protected. And they're not the only ones. ChatGPT's co-founder has another startup, WorldCoin, that wants to give you ownership over your own digital identity. You won't have to trust a big tech company, but you will have to trust WorldCoin's global network of eye-scanning orbs. Well, I think you should not trust us. When a company says we're not evil, you should look at that twice, right? This week on Coinage, we give you the clear picture on digital identity. Clear, which trades under the stock ticker YOU, is a nearly $4 billion company that basically lets you skip the line at the airport for $189 a year. That's it. It doesn't even let you keep your shoes on. But Clear's ambition goes far beyond fancy line cutting. Clear wants to expand its technology to sporting arenas, concert halls, hotels, anywhere it would be useful to confirm that someone is who they say they are. Clear Health Pass offers you and your customers the confidence to move forward. But Clear doesn't stop at verifying your identity. According to internal marketing documents, Clear tracks its users' favorite foods and beverages at sports stadiums, when they arrive at games, what kind of credit card they have, whom they attend games with, and how often they fly first class. This could let users pay for a beer with a fingerprint, simultaneously confirming they're over 21 while charging their card on file, but is that level of tracking really worth the convenience? Well, it is to big tech, because the state of digital identity right now is fractured. You probably have countless usernames and passwords and spend all day receiving two-factor authentication codes and solving CAPTCHAs. The world is run by robots, and sometimes they ask us if we're a robot <laughs> just because we're trying to log on and look at our own stuff. There are some solutions to make life online easier password managers, Apple Pay, and using your Google or Facebook account to log into stuff. But remember, the equivalent offering from our government is a social security number, which is basically a username and a password. And we have to reveal it to employers and stuff all the time. So given all that, it sounds great to imagine having one digital identity, one login to remember in order to post, shop, manage your money, or prove you're you. But who would we trust with that data? How would we make sure our accounts can't be lost or stolen? And how do we get everybody on board? Clear is going about it the typical American tech company way, charging subscribers, leveraging data in order to learn everything about you, and hopefully delivering a smooth premium experience. But Sam Altman's WorldCoin is taking an alternative approach. Instead, they're looking to pay people to stare into an orbs camera, have it snapshot their eyeball, encrypt it, and store it as a reference on the blockchain. This is the orb, and it's the critical piece of hardware that makes WorldCoin work. It's a good looking piece of technology too, designed by a legendary Apple alum, so the tilt of the main board inside matches the 23.5 degree tilt of the Earth's rotational axis. Because why the hell not when you raised $125 million? And it's kind of genius for Sam. While ChatGPT is working on making robots seem more human, WorldCoin wants you to prove your humanity to the robots. Prove. Prove! Prove you're not a robot! In order to create your digital identity, which the company calls your world ID, you have to find one of the 150 orbs floating around the Earth. The orb then scans your eye, encrypts the data, and creates a world ID for you. And if it's unclear why they went with the iris scanning over facial recognition, we spoke with WorldCoin's head of product, Tiago Sada. It turns out the iris uh, is both very resistant to fraud, but at the same time it has enough entropy to distinguish between one in 10 billion people. That process ensures only one identity per person, and that's pretty critical for WorldCoin's top priority, which is the first thing any business owner would do, give away free money. The world should eliminate poverty if able to do so. If WorldCoin is able to get millions and eventually billions of users orbed and using their world ID, their plans to launch a crypto network and distribute free digital money in the form of WorldCoin tokens to everyone in the world. And as altruistic as eliminating poverty sounds, we should point out that owning a vertical monopoly on identity, a crypto wallet, and the token powering it all could make the project incredibly valuable. After all, the company's real asset is its network of verified users. And there are a lot of different ways that WorldCoin could leverage that network to make money. 
I think it'll touch every aspect of our lives, voting in general. Financial products are also something where identity is very, very important. Under collateralized lending, credit, um, insurance, social networks that allow you to, while preserving your privacy, hopefully, uh, prove that you're not a bot. The token hasn't launched yet, but the company hopes to get it out before the end of the summer. Then again, WorldCoin has spent years promising future rewards to the one and a half million people that have already stared into an orb. And it hasn't exactly gone according to plan. WorldCoin has relied on local contractors around the globe to work the orbs, paying them a small amount for each person who gets scanned. But some of those contractors have struggled to recruit potential users who are concerned about handing over their data. A few orb operators were even detained in Zimbabwe where crypto is banned and others ran into tech issues. According to BuzzFeed, one operator quit their job out of excitement when they found out they'd be receiving an orb. But when the orb finally came, after five months, it was faulty and had to be sent back. Then, since that person didn't hit their sign-up quota, their orb was reassigned to someone else. And there's something sus about WorldCoin's approach to onboarding people in developing countries. They typically gave out about 20 bucks in WorldCoin tokens to users who scan their eyes but since the token hasn't launched yet, it's unclear how much that'll end up being worth. And some orb operators in countries like Kenya and Indonesia were paid in fiat currency, but as little as 14 cents per scan. And critics accused the company of preying on vulnerable people to build out its network for cheap. So given some of those reports, I wanted to see for myself. So I took the orb out to get to know it, you know? We went for a walk, had a drink, and things were going well. But I have trust issues. So I had my producer Nate get scanned instead. And the process was pretty much as advertised and took just 30 seconds. And look, Nate's still fine. No, he is not. I did not know what I was consenting to. And you're gonna hear from my attorney. I would say Nate was compensated for his troubles, but technically WorldCoin tokens aren't available for US users because of potential regulatory issues. I didn't even get 14 cents. WorldCoin claims its problems in the past were essentially growing pains. The Orb hardware is now more reliable. They've open sourced some of their hardware and software in an effort to build trust. And they're working on decentralizing the company so its users will have a say in how the platforms run. And that's important because if WorldCoin can't get enough people to trust it, it likely won't get enough people on their network. And if there aren't people on their network, it's basically useless. Ironically, building a trustless solution to proving identity still very much comes down to trust. When a company says we're not evil, uh, you should look at that twice, right? So that's the current state of digital identity. At the public level, most world governments are hopelessly behind. At the private level, tech companies won't stop until they've monetized everything they could possibly learn about us. And at the crypto level, familiar problems stand in the way of mass adoption. What's worrying is the wide variety of doomsday scenarios here. If you give your government too much access to your biometric information, your country could end up like China, where facial recognition systems are used to track down protesters. If you give private corporations too much of your data, well, if you live in the US, you already know what that's like. And rich people will continue to skip you in line at the airport. But with a Web3 solution like WorldCoin says it's trying to build, at least there's a sliver of hope that we'll get to own our digital identities for good. I'm Zach Usman. This was Coinage. Stay safe out there.